All right, what's going on, guys? It's been a while since you've seen my pretty face. <laughs> but uh, yeah, remember I sent out a message on YouTube saying that I ordered three books from Amazon. Well, one of them came in, the Berserk Guidebook, and I'm very excited to read it. I read a little bit, but I think it would also be interesting if while I'm reading it, I go through the guidebook with you guys um, and uh, just kind of talk about some of the pictures, the quotations, some of the statistics that they have in here. Very interesting stuff. So without further ado, let's get started. So the way I have it planned is they sort of made the guidebook in a way where they talk about each character from the Black Swordsman Party, uh, from Griffith's Party the various monsters. So I think we'll just take it one person at a time and uh, just make a nice little video series out of it. So before we do that, though, this guidebook uh, has some nice glossy photos in here. Uh, so I just wanted to show you if I can show it in a way where the glare isn't. This is uh, not working out too well. There's uh, Guts in the Black Swordsman Party. There we go. And then uh, got a nice one here of uh, Guts and Puck. Very nice quality stuff. Um, I wish I could get these photos like framed uh, in a larger version and just put them up in my bedroom. Uh, that would look really sweet. Um, I don't know how my wife would feel about it, but... Uh, I don't think her opinion really matters in this regard. <laughs> um, no, actually, a couple years ago, I bought her a um, Totoro picture that we got hanging up in the bedroom right now. And then a uh, Porco Rosso one for myself. Um, a couple Miyazaki ones. But, you know, I haven't found a good enough Berserk one that I would like to put in the bedroom or, you know, somewhere in the house. Like, I've looked... There's been a couple ones that kind of tickled my fancy, but nothing that I was, like, in love with. Like, if I'm going to spend, like, anywhere from $50 to $100 on something that I'm going to hang up in my house, you know, I want to love it. You know, I don't want to be like, eh, it's all right. You know, I, I, I want to love it, you know? Just like I love this Skull Knight t-shirt. Fucking Skull, he's a badass. Uh, next one we got. Casca and Isidro, very nice. Casca's eating what looks like a looks to be a tomato. Uh, some of it's uh, kind of dripping on her uh, on her breast, her uh, you know breast. <laughs> um, and then let's see. Oh, and then we got uh, Serpico and Farnese. Um, very nice. And then we got um, Shirka rounding things out. And uh, you can kind of see in the background, um, uh, Isidro's right there, kind of uh, looking over at her, kind of uh, getting a little peek -see, like, damn, she's looking pretty cute today. She's looking like a fine little lowly. <laughs> but he's uh, underage as well, so I think it's okay. Um, you know, I, I, I want to ask the question, and uh, you guys can answer it in the comments. Question of the day. If you were Isidro, and let's say for, you know, legal purposes, you were 18 and uh, Shirka and Isma were 18, which one would you go with? Um, Isma is quicker to take off her clothes. And um, yeah, and Shirka looks a little flat. Now she may, she may, you know, grow into her body as she gets older. But, um, and she does have magic, so maybe she could, like, manipulate her body parts. <laughs> um, but, you know, to be honest with you, um, despite it all, I think I'd go with Morda. Uh, because for, you know, <laughs> she's got a nice looking body. And I think she's 18. Um, so, <laughs> uh, Morda, man, I gotta tell you, though, if I were Guts... Prior to Casca regaining regaining her memories, I would have asked Morda for a one-night stand. I would have been like, come on, Morda. You know 
You know you want some of the black swordsman. Don't lie. Don't lie. You want some of this dragon slayer in your uh, cauldron. <laughs> it's pretty huge and uh, pretty thick and sharp. Uh, although that last attribute's probably not something to brag about. Anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, we got a little uh, table of contents here. And then we start off with Guts, and uh, it's got various quotations. The first one being, I'll never lose her again, um, referring to Casca. And uh, it's got three quotes here, very interesting. Uh, I want to stand beside him, attaining something of my own. Um, now, this was back in uh, One Snowy Night. I believe that was like chapter 33 or something. Um and this is when he was talking to Corcus and Judo, and um, you know he was leaving the band of the Hawk because he felt like uh, he was kind of he was kind of being bit weighed down by the weight of Griffith's dream, and he wanted to attain something for himself. Um, next quote: "I've had my fill of miracles, enough to make me puke." Um, this was um, Night of Miracles. This is when um, he was with Farnese. Um, and they were being chased by the spirits. The spirits eventually went into the dogs and turned into like demonic dog like creatures. Got a nice couple shots of Farnese's uh, chest as well. <laughs> um, and then the next one, I guess even if you force back what was lost, it still won't be the way it was. And um, this was when they were on Roderick's boat. And um, he was kind of talking about the fact that you know, he replaced his arm with a prosthetic. And even though he did that, even though he replaced it, it wasn't like it always was because it weighed him down in the water. Even though he saved Casca, he was weighed down himself. And if it wasn't for the Chadley Roderick, think about this for a second. Roderick saved Guts's life. How many people can say that? How many people can say they saved the Uber Chad, the Giga Chad's life? Not many. Roderick can. Um, but anyway, he was kind of making an, an analogy between his arm and Casca's mind. And that even though he might replace Casca's mind, he may not get back the girl he thought he was going to get back. He may not get the Casca of old where, um, you know, she was still innocent and um, still... Um, very go get him and very authoritative and very um, confident in herself. Um, and, you know, Skull Knight kind of warmed him of this. He's like, well, you know, remember, your wish might not be her wish. Uh, so, yeah, good stuff. And then uh, what I really like about this page right here is we got like a little list of um, parameters, attributes. Um, so uh, right there. And um, so it talks about various attributes of guts, one being physical strength. Now that's maxed out. It's at the peak. No surprise there. Stamina is exceptionally high, although I, I'm surprised it's not maxed out as well. I mean, guts of stamina is just unreal. He had the Dragon Slayer on his back, which... Based on my calculations, I think it weighs 500 pounds, and I'll talk about that in a second. But he had a Dragon Slayer on his back that weighed 500 pounds, plus other equipment. So let's just say he had 600 pounds on his back, and he freaking ran for, like, days. And Isidro couldn't keep up with him. He was just freaking running, um, trying to get to the Tower of Conviction. So, that you know, pretty crazy stuff. So I, I thought the stamina should be a lot higher. At least maxed out. Uh, next one is Legerity, which I believe is like mental quickness, which, you know, Guts is very instinctual, um, very quick on his feet. You know, in terms of like battle, um, the ability to think in battle, he, he he's very intuitive. Um, so Legerity, I almost think of as like intuitiveness, the ability to just kind of make something up on the fly. And he's really good at that. He excels at that. Um, intelligence was kind of average, maybe slightly above average. Not too surprising. I mean, every time he talks to the Skull Knight and Skull Knight, 
you know, tells him about some cryptic message about the future, some sort of prophetic prophecy. Um, Guts is like, what the hell is he talking about? You know, looking over at Puck like, I don't understand what's being said. <laughs> this, this fucking man with uh, the Knight of Skeleton, he just kind of... He just kind of follows me wherever I go. And then he says some shit, you know, brings out his dictionary like, um, okay, guts, uh, you know, the shit's going to happen. Uh, her wish won't be your wish. Uh, onomatopoeia, um, Bojangles, <laughs> you know, he just says, he just says anything he can. He just pulls out his dictionary, thinks of the biggest words, makes, makes it sound really nice. And then guts is like, well, what the f- Fuck, I didn't even go to school. How am I supposed to understand this motherfucker? Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, emotional strength is peaked out. I, now, <sighs> emotional strength, like what are they exactly referring to? Because I thought that would be on the lower side. I mean, the fact that he got so angry after the eclipse and he allowed himself to be blinded by rage... I thought, you know, his emotional strength was actually kind of weak. Um, you would think if your emotional strength is higher, you would be able to sort of overcome that and still keep a level head, whereas Guts allows his emotions to dictate him. Um, so I don't know about that one. That one kind of surprised me. And then uh, last one is uh, sociability, um, the ability to, you know, communicate with others, which, you know, is pretty low on there. Um, higher than I thought it would be still, but, um, you know, if you consider after the events of the Sea God and Elfhelm, he is starting to connect with his comrades a little more. So yeah, I guess I could understand that. Now, um, in terms of like physical attributes, um, height is 204 centimeters. Now, when I asked the question a couple weeks ago, I made a poll about it. Um, everyone was saying, oh, it's, it's 204 centimeters. That's six feet, six inches. Well, not exactly. Um, so it's 6.6 feet. And remember there's 12 inches in a foot. So that's six feet, but the 0.6 of 12 inches, it's like 0.6 something, uh, actually makes it eight inches. Um, cause 0.6 0.6 out of 12. It's not just, you don't just take the six and make that the inches. It's 0.6 out of the 12. Um, so yeah, actually he's six feet, eight inches tall, which I think is a pretty accurate representation. Um, now in terms of weight, uh, it's 115 kilograms, which I think is about 250 pounds. Now, as a comp, um, if you look at LeBron James from the NBA, he's about 6'8", 6'9", and about 250. He's listed at 250, but I think he's more like 260, 265, maybe even 270. I mean, that guy's just freaking yoked. And um, But if you look at their body structures, like look at the images right here, fairly similar. So, I mean, if they are the same height... And it looks like a very similar build. I guess I can believe it. You know, 6'8", 250, maybe around 255, 260. Um, which I, I feel like that's a very good fighting weight because, you know, you don't want to be too bulky. You look at some of these bodybuilders and they're like 5'10", 300 pounds. They're freaking yoked out of their minds, but, you know, they could never play a sport. You know, they can't really run around. Their endurance and stamina is probably shit. Um, so I, I think 6'8", 250 is a, is a good fighting weight, and I think they nailed that. Estimated age is 24, which, if you watch my Berserk timeline, that's what I, you know, estimated his age at. And I think that all makes sense when you follow all the events. Um, go look at that video if you want to see, like, how I sort of deduce that. Um, male, n you know, none too surprising. Although we've never seen his dick, so who knows. <laughs> um, black hair and black eyes. Now, do black eyes actually exist? Um, 
Maybe he's got very dark brown eyes that look black. Um, Because I don't think anyone has black eyes. I actually looked it up, and I think you can have black eyes. It's just, it was something about, like, um, I I think if there was, like, bleeding or something, and it made him look black, I I can't remember. Um, But I don't think there's actually a true black eye color. And then... um, it just talks about his weapons as well, like the Dragon Slayer and such. Um, and then um, personality and ideology, violent, um, emotion concealed behind uh, reticence, um, standing up to hardship despite the danger. Um, this was very interesting too. Um, Skull Knight, um, a mysterious figure who sometimes helps Guts also seems like he's trying to guide Guts towards something. That's kind of interesting. Um, now, it's been said before. I think they kind of alluded to it when um, Skull Knight was at Flora's house. Um, kind of the fact that maybe Skull Knight has an ulterior motive and that he's not this, you know, he's he's not this helpful sage or this helpful guide. He's actually someone who's trying to manipulate causality, maybe even trying to use guts to attain something. Um, one could even speculate that maybe he's trying to use guts so that he can destroy the God Hand for himself, destroy Void and everyone else um, via using guts as sort of a, a decoy or maybe some sort of um, someone to you know, maybe wear them down so that Skull Knight can sort of get that finishing blow. So who knows? Um, You would think that Skull Knight at this point in the story would maybe have more of a kinship with Guts. I mean, it seems like they're kind of following the same path. They both wore the Berserker armor. And um, I even thought about the possibility that like King Geyseric and like Guts were somehow related like maybe guts was like the lost long descendant of geyseric which would mean if like skull knight and zod split off they used to be zod uh geyseric at one point that you know maybe like you know he's some sort of great 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 you know grandson or something or who knows um um it, it, so it would be interesting if they were kind of linked in that regard, but who knows? Maybe Skull Knight slash Geyseric doesn't have an affinity towards anyone. I mean, he he sort of helps out Guts in a way. You know, he provides advice and he, he saved him from the Eclipse, but maybe he's just saving him because he knows, hey, this could be a very valuable chess piece in the future, and uh, I'm going to make sure that I use it to its full advantage. Um, who knows? Um, and then it just kind of talks about the history. And, um, yeah, very interesting stuff. And then uh, some of the abilities and skills. I can't read. The, the print is so small. Sword skills, effects of the brand of sacrifice, projectiles. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go, Dragon Slayer. Um, now, it talks about the Dragon Slayer being the same size as Guts. So here's the thing. Well, if Guts is 204 centimeters or 6 feet 8 inches, that would put him at 80 inches. So if the Dragon Slayer is 80 inches... And if we assume like a handle of like 17 inches, I actually looked at a website where they make replica dragon slayers and um, his measurements was the blade was, I believe it was 63 inches long, 14 inches wide and two inches thick. And um, I put that into a calculator um, for steel and I came up with a weight of 500 pounds. That sounds pretty realistic to me. And then that doesn't include the handle. So let's just throw like an extra, I don't know, 30 or 50 pounds. So like 530, 550. Now this guy who built it, he said, now to those exact dimensions, he said he used steel, but I don't know if it's 100% steel or if it was just like a steel finish. Um, But it was over 300 pounds, which... (laughs) 
that's a hell of a fucking sword. I don't know how the fuck you'd move that. <laughs> you know, where are you going to keep that thing? In your shed? <laughs> In your garage? Um, and, you know, your family comes over. They're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's a fucking hell of a sword. And uh, shout out to this guy who fucking made it. I mean, incredible stuff. Now, what's really surprising is he also makes the Golden Age sword as well. And that sword has somewhat similar dimensions. It's the same length. Uh, the blade is still 63 inches. Um, we would assume the same handle as well. The big difference is the width and the thickness. The width is only five inches, and then the thickness, I believe, was a half an inch, which I didn't think it would be this big of a difference. I thought, okay, with those dimensions, maybe it's going to be like 150 pounds. Uh, but with steel, it's only, I believe it was like 45 pounds. I mean, even with the handle, maybe it's like 60 or 70 pounds. So, like, his Golden Age sword is like, 500 pounds less than the dragon slayer i mean that that is a huge jump in weight i mean that's 10 times the weight um damn <laughs> they, you know what's even crazier if you think about it the dragon slayer is twice as heavy as he is just like think about that for a second twice is fucking heavy uh just fucking incredible stuff um, but yeah, I think, um, Berserker Armor, um, cursed armor that draws out strength beyond one's limits at the cost of one's ability to reason, a witch's talisman narrowly provides him full control over it. Uh, yeah, and then he's got, um, various knives, prosthetic hand, pouch for small tools, I would imagine he's got to keep some food in there unless he's just, like, you know, killing on the fly, you know, just killing small animals and such for food. Um, but yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that's it for guts. Uh, so next one we're going to talk about is going to be puck. That will be sometime in the future, maybe tomorrow or in the next couple days. And, uh, yeah, we'll just make our way through, uh, one by one after that, it's going to be Farnese. And uh, we'll just talk about everyone's attributes, some of their famous quotes, their weapons, their skills. And uh, yeah, this will be a fun ride. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Um, you know, if you want to support the channel and uh, help me out a little bit, I do have a Patreon page. You can go on there. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side.